I was looking at the sign. I'm Paula Andrea, and welcome to this week's session of Cosmic Therapy. And if you tuned in last week, then you met our beautiful teenager, Bridget Nicole. Hello, Bridget. And as you can see, we forgot our sign again. So, um, Bridget was gracious enough to make shift one. And so, the line will be open tonight, and we will be receiving calls at 505-2806. Thank you so much for tuning in and turning on to Cosmic Therapy. What in the world is Cosmic Therapy? There is no way to describe it except to say that we use a bunch of material to tie things together, showing that everything in your life happens exactly and precisely as it is meant to happen, and that life is to be lived in a fun manner. Because you are in the middle of fun, Bridget. You are in the middle of fun. We had started a little bit of cosmic therapy tonight before uh, we went on the air because I was looking at this chart. We did an astrological chart of today. And I was thinking about the third house and how, for those of you who are astro astrologers or dabble in astrology, I really want to focus on this third house because the third house, of course, is the house of communication. It is the house where telephone calls come in. And it's the house where you need to show up in your life. This is the house where you are the single most creative that you'll ever be. So any planets that might be found there are significant. I thought we had your chart, honey, because, you know, last week we brought it, and I was going to go over it, but we lost it. So we don't have it. But who cares? Because that's the way it's supposed to be. But anyway, getting back to this third house, um, when you have planets in this third house, it really indicates that you're a maverick in your life. Now, what do you think a maverick means? You ever heard that term? No. Nope. Okay, it means that you're a law unto yourself. You do like you want to. You do how you want to. You do where you want to. You don't ask anybody's opinion, validation, um, interpretation. You don't seek any kind of approval. You just follow this guided light, guided force, this guided thing that's inside of all of us. You're born with it. I'm born with it. You're 15. I'm a little older than that. But that same thing that was in you, that is in you, it's in me. It never ages. It never, ever ages, Bridget. And it remains constant and true. But before we came in tonight, I told you to turn on the radio, right? And right. you just said, it's too staticky, Paula. Yeah. And nothing was going to be picked up. But in fact, there was something that was picked up. And you knew the song. So what is the name of the song? I mean, what was the line that was played? This life that I'm living is all that I'm feeling. This life that I'm living is all that I'm feeling. Okay, this life that I'm living is all that I'm feeling. The point is, are you showing up for your life? Or is somebody else living your life? Wow, I'm going to put you on the spot. What do you think that we are on this earth for? Wow. <laughs> I have no idea. You truly? Truly. You never think about it. That is probably the most honest answer anyone could give. Wouldn't you think so, Sandy? Because most people don't think about it. They think about anything but that. And how about yourself? What do you think, if you had a purpose for being on earth, what would that purpose be? I'm just going to have no idea. So you get up in the morning, and you get dressed for school, and you go to school and you do whatever faces you, right? Pretty much. That's cosmic therapy. You do whatever faces you. But in fact, you do have a reason for being alive. And that reason is shown to you all day long in everything that you do. Remember last week we were talking about it? We were talking about the fact that everything that happens from the moment you get up in the morning, when you place your feet on the floor until you go to bed at night, everything is showing you this intricate pattern that is directly linked to you. And showing and explaining and trying to divulge to you um, various different clues as to what you're doing here. You're here because you want to have fun. You're here because you want you desired to experience pleasure. 
Now, along with pleasure comes pain. Okay? And in this earth realm, this is the only place that we can experience both earth, I mean pain and pleasure. Okay, enough of that boring stuff. Let's get to the theme of the night. Let's see how it's going to tie into this life that I'm living. It's all that I'm feeling. The phone is working in case anybody wants to call. And in fact, we went out and got a speaker phone so that I don't even have to try to hold it up to my ear. Um, it'll just talk, I suppose, if it rings. Let's get the theme. Okay, what we got, honey? Experience, don't interpret. Experience, don't interpret. I love that. Does that not go along precisely and exactly with that? This life that I'm living, it's all that I'm feeling. Experience, don't interpret. So, with every single solitary thing that it looks like that I'm trying to do, I am not interpreting a thing. Not one single solitary thing. Nor am I trying to analyze and uh, criticize and beat lies and jeet lies and any other kind of lies in any of this stuff. I'm saying that everything, no matter what, at random, at random, we choose, it is going to support this theme. Experience, don't interpret. All right, Bridget, let's bring out our dice. Let's throw them up, baby. See what we're going to get. You gonna take it? You gonna hang them up? Hang up. <laughs> okay, you can call back. What do you suppose we do? We have to say hello and then hit the speakerphone? No, we just put speakerphone and then it calls. Oh, is that how it works? Well, thank you for calling and thank you for giving us an opportunity to see how this speakerphone works. I so, what do we do, Sandy? We don't have to pick up the um, receiver. No. We just hit speakerphone. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to see. I rolled five. You rolled a five. All right, so let's get to our tarot cards and see how this theme of experience, don't interpret. Experience life, don't interpret it. I'm going to divide them in half. Okay, Bridget, go with it. You answering it? Yes, I am. It's what's doing? What are we doing wrong? No, we're getting it. Next time. We'll try to just pick up the, um, Sandy says next time pick up and say hello like old timey. This old oh, um, okay. new phone or something with speaker, you can pick a, hit that button and they're supposed to start talking through it but they ain't doing it. All right. All right. I wrote five. So, so let's see who gets the first five. Okay. Just sort of like fish, ain't it? Yeah. Are you looking for a five? I got the first five. You got the first one. I got the first five. Did you get one? No. Okay, well, I got this five. Ooh, you want to see this five? And you know, these cards are nothing in the world but beautifully, artistically crafted pictures that say a whole lot. I think they say a whole lot. Look at that picture. Tell me something about it, honey. What do you see in it? What do you see? Pain. Pain. Oh, did we just talk about that we come to life to experience pain? Or pleasure. Or pleasure. Now, do you think that that woman, whoever is helping that young man, is getting pleasure by thinking that she is helping him? I think so. Okay. That's one of the biggest problems in life because we do think that we can help people. And it interferes with both our growth and the growth of the other person. But... Let's go on. That's the five of pentacles. So let's look that up and see what it says. Let's book. What book are we going to go in? Let's go in this one. Five of pentacles, Bridget. This is what we're talking about tonight. This is the theme of tonight. All right. Six. So five's got to be before the six, don't it? No. Nope. You were just telling me how did you make them. All right. Let's find a five. Woo! Sounds like we're going to get religious tonight. Go ahead. All right. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that served a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was to blind, but now I see. That's a song. Did you know that? Sure did. Okay, well, that's the lines out of the song. First two lines. Go ahead. This is the card when thou art looking for answers. 
and finding nothing. Oh, let's talk about that a minute, honey. This says that either you or me or Sandy or somebody is looking for some answers. All right. Everybody, what you want to do? You want to pick it up? Pick it up. Thank you for calling Cosmic Therapy. I'm Paul Andrea. Hi, how are you? Who am I talking with? Bill? Okay, Bill, let me see if I can't switch you over to the speakerphone and see if it's going to work, okay? And, th and then I won't have to hold it, and then everybody will be able to hear you, if that's okay with you. All right, well, I'm going to get your birthday just as soon as we think we can figure this thing out. Hold on. All right, what do we do? Okay, Bill, are you on there? I think so. I'm new on this technology thing. I'm, me too. Okay, Bill, what's your birthday? My birthday is uh, December the 31st. Hold on. December the 31st, last day, and what year? Uh, 1946, if you can believe that. 1946, you sound so young. Well, so, thank you. I, thank you. I try to keep in shape. You're born in the year of the dog. You're aware of that? The year of what? The dog. What does that mean? No, I'm asking you. You're born in the year of the dog. Are you aware of that? Oh, I, I am now. Okay, the year of the dog means that you are loyal and you defend that which you love and care about. Now, that's, that's, that's very... That's interesting because it's that I was loyal. Yeah. And a lot of my friends tell me that I have disloyal problems, like I'm not loyal enough to them. Okay, well then... You know, that's your What can I do about that? There's nothing you can do about not being loyal. Not what one. Do you, mean? you can't do one single solitary thing about not being loyal. You enjoy not being loyal, so you're not going to stop not being loyal. But just I enjoy not being loyal? I mean, I don't like it about myself, but. Okay. Well, let's go on and see what else is about you, okay? Okay. All right. You're born, you're, Sag you're not a Sagittarius. You're born in the month of Sagittarian. Uh, a Sagittarian, and I always take the influence of the month, even though you are a Capricorn. And you, you had rather uh, argue more than you'd like to eat. That's the first thing. I, more, I argue more than I like to eat. That's true. I and, love to eat. Well, you Don't love get to, me wrong. You love to argue better than that. No, and, no. and you are a comedian, and you are. You're not one that likes to be wrong. I think you've probably been wrong about twice in your life, haven't you? I think you? you perceive that because I like to argue, therefore I have to be right? No. I perceived it because I think you've been wrong about two times in your life. Only two times? Two times. Do you remember? Are you psychic? No, I'm not psychic. I can't stand that word. That's a charlatan word. Do you remember the day and hour that you were um, wrong? Uh, no. You don't. Okay. Well, you were. Let me see. Three and four is seven and 11. That makes you a nine. Is, nine. Uh, Do you know anything about numerology at all? Absolutely not. I don't even believe in that. I don't believe in it either. So it makes oh, okay. two of us. Oh, all right. What about Bridget? Bridget, does she believe in it? No. She don't believe in nothing. <laughs> oh. Okay, so let's see. I don't believe in nothing. She don't believe in nothing or nobody, no time, nowhere, no how. Do you? That's right. Now let's see what it, this has to do with you, Bill, because you're a comedian and I'm glad that you called. Thank you. All right, let's go with it. Honey, what are we talking about? The reason thou art so desperately looking for the answers that seem to be invading thy precisely when you are looking should be grateful and for the grace shown while thou art so indifferently making a fool of thyself. Whoa, let me read that back again. We said... This is the card, when thou art looking for answers and finding none. Now see, there are people who are not really looking for answers and not interested because you can't teach those that need to be taught. That's a fact. The people who think that they know already, you can't teach them anything. And I'm not interested in teaching anybody anything anyway. The reason thou art so desperately looking for the answers that seem to be evading thee is precisely when thou should be grateful for the grace shown while thou art so inadvertently making a fool of thyself. Okay? It is as if thou walkest into a room of roses asking, what is that smell? Thou art in the midst of thy personal expression of God in mortal form. 
Thou dost not begin to understand what a rose is, much less how it's supposed to smell. So be it with the answers of which thou dost seekest. How can thee possibly know what thou hast need of, desires, or truly longs for, if thou doesn't understand who and what thou art, and the meaning of the, thy true purpose? Okay, Bridget. What this is saying is, no. Okay, for example, Bill called up. He wasn't interested in any of that information. We're all aware of that. That was a lot of fun. He's a nine, and he certainly has a, um, a life of vaulted. I like that word. How do you like that word, Sandy? Vaulted insight. Okay? That he has at his disposal, and that he should and will use. And he's not accustomed to asking anybody for anything ever. That's not his deal. So we're going to get back to... This card, Five of Pentacles. But Bill did call. See, we can't um, push out Bill as being irrelevant, even though his interest was superficial. Because my interest is superficial. Your interest is superficial. Sandy's interest is superficial. You know, we're all phony. I'm a phony. I'm the biggest phony there is. I just know it. That's the difference. But anyway, he has vaulted insight, and Bill called. And he called, and it was Capricorn who called. And that is Saturn. Now, Saturn says, while you're in this earth, you are going to have limitations and restrictions. Limit me and concentrate me. Limit me and concentrate me. When we have too many choices, we end up in a muddled phase. This particular guy in this card, show it again, Okay? He has gone through some muddled puddles. Probably falling down with that bandaged up head, wouldn't you say? Yep. Okay, his hands hurt him too. And so she's trying to comfort him. Well, the comfort that this is saying, what? Experience and don't interpret. So, if you were looking at this card just like I am, Sandy's looking at it too, we could say, well, you know what? This woman, she's trying to help him out because he's really got in a battle and he needs somebody to care for him. And she looks like she's of the holy um, descent because she's got something on that looks like a habit. And we could go all.